Hey guys, Tavares Gray here. Safa Gray. And we're Godly Dating 101. We just want to thank you for tuning back in today. Today we'll be talking about is there a the, the one and what are signs to know if they are the one. Okay, so we don't believe that there is the one. Um, because if you marry the wrong person and you don't marry the one for you, what necessarily happens is that you mess it up for the rest of society yeah. and it becomes a negative domino effect yeah. so we don't believe that there is the one complex and the one also locks god in a box because you're saying that god can't receive glory out of a relationship unless it is with that one specific person on planet earth or you're that difficult to deal with that no one else is compatible with you you know it just doesn't really make any sense and it forces yourself to wait on thing wait on you're saying you're waiting on God but at the same time you're actually delaying God's blessing because God can get glory out of any relationship that we allow him to take control over and you know that's not saying that you know you can just marry anybody mm -hmm. you know what I mean that's not what we're saying we're not saying that you can go and find a non-believer we're not saying you can go find another religion we're not saying you know just because they're the opposite sex get married you know that would be complete nonsense mm -hmm. but what we are saying is it's not always about you know who you marry, but how your marriage works. Yeah. It's how the relationship how works, them. how you love them, how is God glorified in them, is God included or is God out of mm -hmm. it? You know, it's not just because they had every preference that you wanted, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's not a lot of times that is the negative part about why people are single because we don't allow God to work because we have to get those preferences. And you know, that just isn't gonna be the case every single time. Yeah. yeah. So we don't we don't need to pray and ask God is dating a, a non-believer his will yeah okay. um, because if they don't believe in God it's like how could you be with someone who doesn't love the, the same God that you love you know worship the same God that you worship it's gonna be a little difficult the dynamics of that relationship it's not in his will for that to be the case because your relationship is supposed to glorify God and how can you glorify God if only one of you is you know is a believer in Christ exactly and you know God's will it gives it gives range for free will God's mm -hmm. plan for our lives is not locked in a box if you don't go to college and get a bachelor's in arts and you're going to hell you disobey God that's not the case if your steps are ordered by God God allows like a free range for you to walk in and God is ordering your steps allowing you not to make the wrong choices. So if you're trying to find, is this person the one, you know, sign shouldn't be, oh God, I really want to know if this person is the one for me. If you want me to talk to this person, put a flat tire on my car today. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, God is not going to put a flat tire in your car. You know, if you had a bad tire, you know, it just bursted on the highway. It's not a matter of that was God's plan. It was a matter yeah, of, you know, coincidence and you know, we ask God for these signs and you know sometimes those signs can actually hurt us because we're asking God to do things and it's like God is not going to give you a sign for a sinful relationship yeah it was clear from the start you know you guys can't control those hormones so why are you trying to be you know in secret with them why are you guys alone together it's you don't need a sign for that you have to understand that some relationships are just not going to work okay, you know Exactly, God can't bless a relationship that excludes Him, and that's what we have to uh, we have to understand that God can get the glory out of us. I'm not saying you know it's a matter of Christians, you know, once you're inside the church, you're automatically a great spouse. You know that's far from the truth, but we have to allow God to order those steps. Mm -hmm. People tend to ask things like, "Okay, oh, I want a sign from God," and there's nothing wrong with a sign. There came a point in Isaac's life when Abraham was getting older, and Abraham wanted to make sure his son got a good wife, you know, a wife that was from a God-fearing culture, you know, from their people, you know, they don't have to worry about their son backsliding because of the type of woman he's with. Mm -hmm. And the servant knew that that was a serious role. He doesn't, he can't just bring anyone back home, you know, and a servant prayed to God, you know, if I go out there, please make this journey prosperous. And, you know, he mentioned to God that the person that does this, when I ask for a drink of water, allow that to be the servant's wife. And the, the woman did exactly as the servant yeah. mentioned. And we have to understand that God honored that, that request. So God can give you a sign, yeah. but we have to be sure, you know, don't, don't get drastic with 
requesting signs and I need a sign for this I need a sign for that mm -hmm. you know there are certain signs we should be asking God for and certain signs we should be checking the fruit of the relationship yeah. for and it's things like can I serve God with them you know yeah. like things along mm -hmm. that nature can can we worship God together are we compatible you know yep is this person a burden to my life or are they a blessing to my life exactly you know are they drawing me closer to God or am I stepping back from God and finding myself in sinful positions because of this relationship? Exactly. Like some signs, you don't need you don't need something drastic. You just need to fully understand mm -hmm. this is not God's plan or this relationship. I'm actually seeing myself growing. I'm actually seeing love inside of the relationship yeah. and we can grow together. This mm -hmm. is someone I can see my life together with. But we don't want to just assume just because a person is inside the house of God that they're inside the kingdom of God. Not every person that is in church is there for Jesus. Some yep. people are there for a spouse, you know, and it, that's sad, but it's the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that when we're seeking the one, we should not be seeking, you know, God, who is that person for me? We should be seeking God. How can I be the one? Yep. You know, God, how can I build my prayer life so I can lead a woman? How can I build my prayer life so I can submit to a man? Or how can we submit to your kingdom? How can I do something? You know, mm -hmm. like things along that nature. And, you know, we can't just try to make sure we find someone perfect because if she's perfect and I approach her and I'm not, I'm wasting her time. Yep. You know what I mean? And we have to understand that a God relationship is not about two perfect people. The only perfect person is God. And we're both imperfect and we have to submit to his leadership. We have to submit to his guidance. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way the relationship can grow. Yep. So it's not a matter of how do I find the one. And I know some people may still believe there's a one. And it's nothing wrong with that. There may be one person specifically for you. And it may be one person specifically for me. But at the end of the day, it's not always about who the person is. But how we live, how we act, how we submit to God's plan. You know? Yep. Amen. Sometimes we ask God for signs regarding someone and you know we're asking God to show us the one but we already have our mind set on one particular exactly. person exactly. and so it doesn't matter what sign whatever whatever happens we feel like that's a sign from God and that's a dangerous place mm -hmm. because it shows that if you're not careful you might be seeing something or you feel like that's a sign from God mm -hmm. when it's not so it's it's important for you to know the voice of God and not to just set your mind on one person so that if anything happens you think okay that's that's god telling me that i'm supposed to be with this person exactly. because it becomes dangerous and you set yourself up for failure and the issue with that as well is we make marriage an idol we make that person an idol where if that person rejects us mm -hmm. now i don't know what to do with myself you know I've, I've responded to many messages where some people weren't even dating but because that one relationship didn't work out, that person didn't show the same interest. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, they believe they're a failure. Mm -hmm. I have no more worth. I'm not beautiful. I'm ugly. I'm this mm -hmm. and I'm that. And in all reality, no one can give you something that they don't have. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So even if I show interest, but I don't sh I don't show the, the need to commit, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Yeah. It just means I'm not ready to commit. And, you know, we, we can't keep placing so much emphasis on one specific person because if we place emphasis on one specific person, then if that falls through, then, you know, our relationship with God falls through yeah. because we no longer want to talk to God because that's what we had our, all our hopes in. And what makes it worse is if the relationship does work, then we can neglect God, yeah. you know, because we got what we needed. Yeah. We got the one. And a lot of people think a God relationship can replace a relationship with God. And that is just never going to work. You have to know God for yourself. It doesn't matter how much my wife prays if I don't pray. It doesn't matter how much I fast if she doesn't fast. It doesn't matter how much I see God if she doesn't see God. You know, we have to both understand that the relationship requires two people growing. If one person is doing it, then the next person is just becoming dead weight for the relationship and it cannot flourish. So we understand that some people may still not understand the need you know, to develop themselves and they still spend a lot more prayers, you know, mm -hmm. um, just God send the one. But I, char I, you know, I challenge you today that please go and ask God to help you become the one. Yep. You know, you may not understand who the person is or when they're coming, but you have to understand that God can't really give every blessing to you if you're not ready to handle it. Because yeah. if we get a blessing early, we'll mishandle it. That's like a good child, you know. Just because you love them, you're not going to buy a 13-year-old brand new BMW and tell them to go drive. You know, you love them, but they're not ready for it. No. You know, maybe when they're 18 or they're 21, you know, as a gift. But at the same time, it's not like uh, a marriage is 
good behavior present. That's not a good, you know, God's not going to just bless you because you were doing good because blessings are not always things, mm -hmm. but we have to allow ourselves to prepare for what God has us for. Mm -hmm. And if you have any doubts and you don't understand why the promise takes so long, you just have to understand that God wouldn't put you through a process if it wasn't necessary. If you had any questions for us, just let us know. Leave a comment below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Share with a friend. And we hope that this blessed you. We hope that at least one part touched you mm -hmm. and that you can grow from this. God bless you.